Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Travis Snail, and welcome to a Geek First review of the Spider Man DLC, The Heist. So, this is going to be obviously a review primarily just for anyone that checked out our old review of Spider Man PS4. That was myself, Dylan, and Kirkland, so go check that out. That was some good conversation on the game, some, some pros and cons, which will actually transition into this conversation. Um, before I get into this, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Travis Snail. How y'all doing? Welcome to a Geek First Review. If you've seen the title, this is a Spider-Man DLC, the heist review. So if you're just interested, then fine, listen along. But this is primarily for people that, you know, checked out our review, own the game. If you don't own the game, that's great. Listen along. I'm not telling you you can't. There's no warning on it. But as far as my overall thoughts and whatnot of the game, I would say go back and listen to our review that I did with Kirkland and uh, Dylan because we got into the nitty gritty, we got into pros and cons, and uh, yeah, some of those cons I think will maybe transition a bit over to this conversation, but very slightly because we covered it already. But what I have not covered yet is in less than two weeks, I'm going to be pitching this hard for the next cast. We got a few casts coming out before then. <sighs> the 24-hour Extra Life Cherry stream is upon us. One, I'm excited because... Last year, honestly, was just tons of fun, but I'm also excited because just to be raising money for charity again, and I'd say it in the least cheesy way, but it's the it's the thing that we do all year that actually somewhat matters. We've only done it once before, but last year we surpassed our goal, so I'm hoping that can happen again. Any money we make would be great because it all goes towards BC Children's Hospital, so if you don't want to donate because you think, oh, they're too low, they might not hit their goal, even if we don't hit our goal, it's going to go to BC Children's Hospital, but we're trying to raise $1,000. So we'd very much appreciate it. One November 3rd, please come and watch because we're going to have a fun time. We got a tournament to crown. the. We have a gaming league, if you didn't know. <laughs> we talk about it a lot, but we have a eSports sort of gaming league. We have a tournament. The winner of that's going to get a title shot somewhere in the future. We got title matches. We got two of them going on. We got a... I can't announce that yet. In the next couple of days, it's going to be a podcast announcing a huge match going on. Um, Rod or not with Taylor and Ta uh, Taylor and Taylor with Taylor and Ruben, where they play awful games and do punishments towards one another. Pan Solo, the guy that is um, just roams our mind in Dylan's house and just is always up to mischief, is going to be there. I'm going to try and unmask him because that man has attacked me with pants and kitchen supplies all over the town. And I want to put an end to it. And even my brother is making an appearance. Yes, the very, very contro uh, contro the very, very controversial uh, Travis uh, or Michael Snell II. I'm Travis Snell. I'm not the second, unfortunately. My parents named him after my father, so that shows you how much you know they love him over me. And good for him, you know. But you know what? He is a very controversial figure. If you've seen his shows, go check them out. I rumored they might be dropping another show, uh, but yeah. More or less, just please come watch. It's going to be a fun time, but please donate a dollar, five dollars, a hundred dollars. Anything helps. I know a hundred dollars cheap, but that's what I mean. Even if it's just a dollar, it all helps. Anything helps us because it goes towards BC Children's Hospital. If we hit our goal of a thousand dollars, three shaven heads myself, Taylor Field, and Tyler Breaks for shaving our heads bald. So you want to stay tuned for that because, you know, my glorious locks are going to be leaving. Unfortunately, hope, hope, uh, hopefully and unfortunately at the same time. I'm not ready to say goodbye at them right now, but I'm willing to do it for this. But And if you cannot donate, because if you can donate, that would be great. If you look at the math, it's only 20 people, $50. That's achievable. But if you can't, what I'm please asking is on November 3rd. Like I said, come watch, but share that link. Share the donation link because there might be people out there that can donate, that can give it. Uh, and yeah, that would be really that would be really cool. If we could hit 1000 that would be... That'd be cool for just, you know, a few few uh, good old geeks in little old Kelowna, BC, Canada. So that's all my plugs out of the way. I'm not going to plug any more in this episode. But uh, yeah, I'm going to, next, all these episodes we've been plugging 24 hour stream, we're going to be always plugging it. So even if, you, if you're tired of hearing the spiel and you're fast, going to fast forward, that's all right. Because it's always a good cause and we want to push it. So please check that out November 3rd. Go to Twitter and Facebook for all our social media details. And subscribe on podcast services and YouTube for all the rest of our episodes and reviews and we got a lot of them right now and we got a lot coming so spider-man dlc the heist so i guess i'll pick off where i left off as far as um i'm not gonna do any spoilers till the very end as far as the story spoilers i think there's two like you know stories that are added in here that are minor spoilers but nothing too huge but if you don't want any spoilers then at the end you know dip out but 
as far as where we left off uh, when we were talking about our overalls for Spider-Man, we had brought this up when the game, one of my cons was, and uh, Dylan, this was a huge one for him, and he's, you know, putting this, the flag in the moon in the Spider-Man DLC moon by saying, and, and the flag is just waving and it says a big N-O, it's a no. He's not buying it just to prove a point, and I understand his point. I'm just a sucker, and I can't not play any of this great game, but Dylan is staying strong for lots of us that... You have a few, and these are minor spoilers, but you have things like Silver Sable or you have things like Black Cat that were in the main game and just the game that you bought straight up $70, $60. You played it and those stories didn't really feel fleshed out. And to me and to the other guys, it wasn't that, oh, they're fleshed out because they're bad writers. It just didn't feel fleshed out because it felt like they're obviously saying it for DLC. Black Cat is obvious and one of the chapters in DLC is called Silver Lining. So I imagine that's when Silver Sable is coming back. So it feels a bit shitty and it's one of those things where it's a fine line of DLC of what is acceptable and what's not. And I understand people saying this wouldn't be acceptable because I really don't think it is, but I did the same thing in Batman. I did the same thing in Experiment. I just like the games too much to purchase it, but that's why I don't give the game a perfect rating because it's like, eh, to me it's, because what is added in this game is a main campaign you know, like, I'm just, you know, not another, not like a huge main camp, but so I guess another side mission, and then challenges and collectibles. That's what added in this game, and it's pretty much just another skin of what's already in the game. This stuff is still tons of fun. To start with the actual, the main, like, the meat of it, Black Cat, it's great. I'll get into this, uh, story specifics at the end, but it's pretty much just your general, you know, same old, same old, okay, Black Cat's up to some stuff, the Spider-Man's gonna stop her, and, you know, they have a pass and have a great back and forth. But it's done really well. And the thing is, with Black Cat and even Catwoman, those characters can quickly become like caricatures of each other because they are like these very powerful, sexy, dominant women in comic books that have, you know, have a strange relationship with our protagonist. And many times I've seen that, and even in other media, but those two sometimes can just become, come off too sexy or too kind of one note I would say is the best way to describe sometimes that they're not well written and I think this Black Cat is not like the deepest character this game has but they do a good job of she's not just super sexy she's not just you know flirting all the time she has some heartfelt moments and they're very small because I'd say I'd say when I did beat everything this took probably I played in two nights probably six to seven hours with the challenges as well but sometimes I mess it around and they added more crime missions so it's pretty much all that stuff but the the side mission, the story was tons of fun, and the levels in there were tons of fun. Um, I found there were a couple in there that were, I am playing on ultimate difficulty now, but there's just a few missions that had like a lot of big dudes and a lot of rocket launchers, so it did pose some, uh, some struggle, so that was fun because that was one of my complaints about New Game Plus, it didn't feel too much harder, but there's some levels, man, there. There's one, and this is a minor spoiler, there's one level where you're in a museum and you're trying to stop criminals from stealing art and they they will have moments where you're fighting and then all of a sudden they'll kind of be like a alarm they'll go off just for your player like in the hud and then you have to follow them and it starts it's green and they can get to yellow and get to red when it's they're in danger of escaping i don't remember anything like that in the main game so i could be wrong but if it's if it was not it was a welcome addition i really like that met that uh, level as far as the side missions i'd say this was actually my favorite this is including the game ones uh, the main game ones, I would say it's my favorite because one, the story was great, but the missions didn't feel repetitive, which can happen. And like that happened a lot in Batman and Spider-Man. Sometimes that felt like that happened where the story was good. It was captivating, it had good characters and it actually had characters coming from the past as far as our game and not the, like any, there is characters from the past as far as new comic book characters coming in. It's a minor spoiler, but okay, Hammerhead is mentioned and you see him. It sounds like he's, or it looks like he's going to be maybe a villain in the next DLC or down the line, maybe in another game, but he is talked about. So you got a new character, but then you also get minor development with, um, I won't say who, but with other characters that were current in the main game. So that was fun because I really just expected it just to be a one-off of you're hunting down Black Cat and that's it. But you did get some kind of ties to the main game and the main plot line the main storyline i should say so that was lots of fun uh they threw in a fucking mj reporter mission didn't need that i'm not even the biggest fan of the main game but with this being such a small portion it still worked because the way the story 
the way they set up the story, it did it worked in there fine. But it, it's now even when I'm replaying the game New Game Plus with that and Miles, it's like oh those kind of suck to sit through when you've already played through them once. And this one's super quick. It didn't need to be in there, but I imagine they're gonna put that in all of them. So yeah, the story one again. If you're not a fan of what they did with the DLC. I don't know how I could convince you. All I can convince you is that I'd say it was the best side mission that they've done from the missions that were included and the uh, the actual uh, story. So that's what I'd say about that. Uh, the main or the and then the other challenges you had the crimes, which is pretty much same old same old. There's a bit more like bomb defusals in this one, and there's a lot more of them because they're kind of mobsters like these crime missions like kidnapping somebody or it's like one guy like they're mugging them for money so there's a bit of variety but honestly that doesn't bug me if the crimes aren't that like don't have a big variety because i just want an excuse to be spider-man in that world being up criminals and then when i'm out of stuff to do it's like eh. so even if they you know announce hey we're gonna make a hundred new crime districts you know 100 new crimes in each district i'd be in because i love fighting i love using those gadgets so that's fun they bring back screwball which is good so um her missions are challenges that were like taskmasters so you'll have combat ones you'll have these ones that i found fun that you will not get to use all your gadgets um so it, that that was fun i i like that character she's something new and fresh because yeah she's she's been around since 2008 but really that's very new for a comic book character so and i have very much like i think no experience i think i even when we started the playing this game i forgot she was a real marvel character i thought they maybe like you know invented her for the um for the video game until i looked into it and i think i've seen her in a few things here and there but not enough not enough to leave an impression um uh what else did they have so they had these three new suits you get one right when you start the game you get another when you finish the heist and then you get another when you uh complete all challenges I like the suits. I like the UK one the least. I don't know why it's the back I'm not a big fan of. I like like the armored Scarlet uh, kind of uh, Ben Riley sort of uh, costume in a way. It, it's very much like the current costume right now in the Marvel comics. How it's like the classic Spider-Man but it's armor and it glows. That's what this is. It's uh, I can't remember what they called in the game. But it, it's Scarlet Spider but in like an armor form. The only thing that I'll say is a disappointment there is they didn't add any new suit power. So... I'm not going to complain because I'll take more, I'll always take more suits, but just a minor thing of, okay, every suit comes with the power. These three did not. Um, what else is there? There's a, as far as collectibles, it's not really collectibles are the same as like the backpacks, but there's a cop that was working on the black cat case before when Felicia Hardy's dad and he wants all the art and I can talk about that in spoilers, but you're just finding these paintings. That was fun enough. So I would say... Before I get into spoilers here, is the DLC worth it? I got the, like the, uh, whatever it is, Special Ultimate Edition, I don't know what, who knows, So games have so many codings for these, uh, you know, editions that, uh, I don't know, it's a special edition. I bought the one that I could get everything because I just knew I'd be playing this. If you didn't get that, is it worth it? <coughs> I think it's exactly what i was saying before if you can get past kind of what other like something like dylan if he if you had a similar problem if you can look past that for the fun it's definitely worth it i don't know what it is on its own so if there's still a way to buy like all of them together i would do that but still if you love this game if you got a you know 100 percent you know achievements or trophies and you're just dying to play more and dying for anything in this game I would recommend it. And I would still honestly recommend it in the fact of, I don't know how the other stories are going to be because we've got two more DLCs coming out, but I would recommend it even the fact of if you wanted to dip your toes in, the story is lots of fun in the Black Cat one. I'll talk about that in spoilers if you really want to know, but I think it's, if you are a, I'm trying to think, if you're a hardcore Spider-Man fan or just a Spider-Man fan, I think you would really much enjoy the story. If you're new to the Spider-Man universe, I'm not sure. Like, if you don't even know much about Felicia Hardy or Black Cat, I'd say you don't need it. But if you want for gameplay, gameplay is great. Missions are great. So, I would recommend it. I think I I was tickled by it because I was surprised as far as the main side mission, how much reference there was to main stuff going on. And we even got these good cutscenes that I was surprised to get. And they were building upon stuff that happened at the end of the game. And nothing big, nothing like 
you know, the game did have those two, like, special end credit scenes. Nothing like that where it's, like, another end credit scene or a new huge villain, you know, Venom's here. Nothing like that. It's just little stuff, you know? It's just stuff that's adding towards it that it's it's nice. It's, like, it's it's fluff, but, like, the best type of fluff, like a whipped cream sort of fluff in between games. Because, obviously, it's going to be a while before we get Spider-Man 2, probably on the PS5. And it's nice to kind of... The game ended, but we're getting a little updates on characters here and there. So, yeah, I would recommend it. I think it's worth the price of admission. Yeah, it's a little shitty that they took out this stuff from the main game, I would assume, just the way, or they deliberately planned it this way. So, yeah, that is really crummy, but if I got to take that out of it, I had a great time, and I'm excited for the next two DLCs. Jumping into spoilers quickly, um, don't have too much to say, they're not that long, so 3, 2, 1, this is your last chance, I'm going to talk about some spoilers, uh, I'll talk about the painting ones first, and we'll end with Black Cat, I knew it was the Black Cat's dad, just because, like, they laid on, like, th this game, sometimes the writing's really good, but sometimes they make it very obvious, it's the same thing with Pigeon Guy, when, uh, Peter brought up his wife, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'll tell, uh, Marie that, uh, one day, maybe, and hang out with phone and Spider-Man be like, hmm, I wonder what's going on there. It's funny because the game and its writing, I feel sometimes it's very adult and not, you know, Spider-Man XXX, but I guess I shouldn't say very adult. I think adultish, but I mean, they're not, it doesn't seem like they're dumbing it down aiming for a kid audience or anything like that. It's a game that kids and younger teens could still enjoy. It's not like that where it's like so out there, but there's other times where they just make it super obvious or it's super lame duck writing as far as, yeah, we want to make sure you get this and it feels like it's written for a younger age. And that's what that pigeon guy felt like and that's what this felt like because the whole time he's just like, yeah, uh, he would, because the whole thing is, he, he Spider-Man in this continuity knows that Felicia Hardy's black cat and he brings it up a couple times and there's something about like, uh, talking about like he had all these paintings like the original black cat but why would he keep doing it and why would he give a you know why would he sacrifice himself and the guy would just be like well you know anyone would do something for a daughter like that or you know something those type of lines making it as obvious as possible that he is Felicia's uh, dad and the funny thing is like the way and it's really clunky it's fun like finding the collectibles but then it's really clunky where once you find the 10th one you call him or he says something like, oh, I finally have the art and now I can, you know, rest in peace. It's it's not that at all. But it's just something big, like a big like cliffhanger. And then he hangs up and Peter's like, oh, I wonder wonder what's wrong. I should call him back just to make sure. He calls him. No answer. He tracks his phone, gets the NYPD, and they're like, oh, he, what do you mean? We don't know. Like, uh, what's his name? Lieutenant Mackey. And they're like, we've never heard of Lieutenant Mackey. I guess you've been played or whatnot. And then he goes to phone him again, and that time he picks up. So literally, like, just tried to phone, no answer. Had to set up you to go to the police station, and then he picked it up after. No sense at all. It was it was, it was was fun, because it was a tie to Black Cat, and uh, it was a good a little collectibles. But I actually said it was the weakest. The screwball stuff was good, the crime stuff's good, but the pain, just because that was very poorly written and just very obvious. Um, and then Black Cat. So this is... Uh, in this continuity or this universe, they set up that they dated before and they set up that they actually, you know, got it on because the main thing is here. So Black Cat is under Hammer, Hammerhead's thumb. She's having to get these thumbnails for him and uh, she's trying to find a way out. Classic Black Cat and Peter is trying to help and whatnot. And I can't remember exactly how it gets brought up because it happened to me last night. Hmm. So, I think he just asks, like, why are you doing this? Not as stone and <laughs> terrible delivery as I just did, because I just took a drink of water, so that killed that. But he's just like, why are you doing this? And she reveals that she has a son, and then she doesn't reveal who the father is. She's very coy with that. Parker's worried about it. He's on the phone. or uh, Before he gets on the phone with MJ, it's great. He's just like, I couldn't be the father. Well, I guess I could be the father, but I can't really think about that right now. I'm going to stop thinking about it. Once again, you're the guy that plays Spider-Man. Great. He does a fantastic job. And the way they write Spider-Man is fantastic. Sometimes the way they write other stuff, not the greatest. So they play this thing for most of the DLC that, uh, or most of the mission that she has a son and it's possibly Peter's and she keeps kind of dodging it. Like we're going to talk about it later, blah, blah, blah. And then the big reveal is there is no son. And she was really doing this to get to a bigger hard drive so she could get Spider-Man's help. It was too big to pull off by herself. And then she locks Spider-Man up. 
And then Spider-Man is chasing after her because he overhears Hammerhead's guards and they go, oh, that thumbnail has a tracker and they're going to blow up her penthouse. He gets her penthouse, not enough in time, and then it blows up and she's presumably dead, but she's not dead. She's going to be fine. We just see her on screen. The explosion happens and Spider-Man doesn't get to her. You know, like it's it, it, it like shows her and then it cuts away and then big explosion. So I guess there's explosion, some fire by her, but she's Black Cat. She's going to make it out. The question is, first i don't know if she's gonna make it out of the fact of do we see her again in this dlc i sure hope so or i'll be really disappointed if i go back and think about it because they've set up the story and they already once in the main campaign without you having to pay for dlc set up this like the black cat has to be continued and this dlc literally ends with to be continued i know they could just kill her off and then the next game say she's not dead but her story seems kind of tied to what's happening in the dlc it seems like the next one's going to be hammerhead and then silver sable Maybe they won't have time to add her into there, but I feel like that'll be, I'll be a little disappointed with that. Um, and honestly, I really liked, I know, oh, so I don't know how to feel about this, so I'm not going to put it as a pro or a con, but it fits Black Cat's character to fool, to mess around, to trick Peter Parker slash Spider-Man into helping her. Classic Black Cat, Felicia Hardy, where... You know, she wants something, but she's never going to tell you. She's going to go about it in a very sneaky, kind of disrespectful, shady way. And that's what she does. She told Spider-Man she had a son and very much hinted that it was his son. Um, that was fun. And I, it, that's what I mean. I'm not mad about it because it fits the Black Cat character. But there was part of me that wanted her to have a son. Not so much as it had to be Peter that was the father, but just to add something new, some new fresh take because that's one of my complaints about the main game was you look at doc ock other than looks not much has changed the second you see octavius you're like he's gonna be doc ock and it's gonna happen this way and you're like yep this is exactly how it goes down not that every game can be like that because even the batman arkham games are not like that but i feel like they were a bit stronger in the storytelling department and they would take certain risks like things like I don't know if I want to spoil that game, but there's certain characters that might die off or there's certain scenarios you're put in and, you know, they're not a big, huge, entirely new spin on the Batman universe, but there's something different. And that's something that I loved about the Batman Telltale. That was something completely different and very unique and each character was not what you're expecting. I don't need that in this game, but I would have liked them to make Black Cat their own and I guess they still wanted to view the ultimate kind of trick, but I still think there could have been a way to get her to lock Spider-Man up or something equivalent to that where she still betrays Spider-Man and maybe she let him on about being a son. That could have been the big betrayal that, you know, he's not your son, I just needed your help. That would have got the same effect as Spider-Man. And I like the moment when you have to chase after her and she's like, why, like, uh, I, you know, stabbed you in the back. Like, why are you being so nice? He's like, it's not about being nice. It's about doing the right thing. They got, they know Spider-Man, you know, like these people know what they're doing and they, they got them nailed down. So that was great to see. Um, and then, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else. Uh, I guess some of the character stuff, MJ, you have some conversations with her and those are really fun because they're talking about being a dad and then, you know, what that could mean. And they kind of a little tiff there and then she phones it back in my game is literally like phones it back. Like you might be a father or like, blah, blah, blah. he tells her and they kind of get that like, of course, you know, they're back together. Might be a little awkward that he has a kid. She hangs up and then Spider-Man goes, oh, I got to go check around the town and, you know, see what's out there because the game wants to kill some time before the main mission. And then, like, literally 30 seconds later, MJ calls, like, I had time to think about it. And you know what? It's fine. We were broken up. And it's like, that happened. maybe that didn't happen to you guys, but through my main play, the first game, that would always happen more. The main story would end and it would make it seem like you are going to go out and do some stuff. Like, okay, now's my time to roam over the city like okay i got time to do crimes and collectibles and then like right away i get a call from the main story that happened here again but that was lots of fun um i love their back and forth when he's like yeah i dated her blah, blah, blah. and she's like yeah i did some people too and he's like people plural they, they like i said they they got spider-man and peter parker on lock they do a good job of capturing the essence and the heart of that character especially the humor is great, but the heart is the biggest thing. Even this humor, the way they add in the heart, the way they add in this caringness, all this banter with MJ, you feel like he really cares about her. Spider-Man is one of the biggest comic book characters, and it's because of his heart, and I'm glad they nailed that. So that's great. You get some phone calls from Miles, which I really liked because I, 
again, I wasn't expecting anything like that, and I'm almost wondering if we're going to see him. I think we will, because we got an MJ mission, so I imagine we could get a Miles mission as just, like, roaming around, no spider powers, even though he has spider powers now, so maybe they'll avoid that. But I think we'll still physically see him, whether it's in like a level or a cutscene. But that was great. He's just talking about, like, hey, you want to do training, and, um, you know, how I'm feeling this way, and uh, what are you doing after school? I got free time. He's giddy. He has a super. Uh, he has a spidey power, so he wants to get going. But Peter Parker's trying to let him know. He's like, "Hey, like I was young and stupid. Like let's take it slow. Keep yourself busy." But like I said, it's not like this. What the second game will be. It's not Miles developing in a huge way, making leaps and bounds. But it's little like fun little uh, appetizers, or I guess in this case, dessert of what's to come next. I guess you don't get dessert before dinner. Maybe some people do. So. That's exciting. But this is what this feels like. It feels like an appetizer before Spider-Man 2, so I like that. And then, yeah, it ends with this really fun, great scene of, uh, like I said, Felicia, presumably dead, and then MJ saying, like, oh, you're not a dad. And he's, like, kind of reveal relieved. And then they're talking about being a dad. She's just like, oh, you're going to be a great dad one day. And then he goes, yeah, with the right woman. And it's kind of a zoom out, and it's, you know, to, to infer that, you know, they're going to, you know, get married and make babies and be very, very happily and live every... Lever, oh man, live happily ever after on, after all, happily ever after all. How does the saying go? I don't know. No idea. So that was my review of the Spider-Man Heist DLC. I'll be doing one for Turf Wars. I'll do one for Silver Lining unless those are awful and I just can't bear to talk about them, but I doubt. I'm just excited to get more content. Um... I, when is the next one drop in November? So I'll be ready for that. I'll be playing Red Dead all the time. So I wanted to finish this before Red Dead. Let me know in the comments below whether you're on YouTube or hit us up on Facebook, or Twitter. Let me know if you have any questions about it. If you have any things, whether you played it and you have questions, like, oh, did you like this? Or if you just want to let me know, did you think it was worth it? Were you disappointed? Are you wavering on if you want to spend the money? Whatever your heart desires, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for tuning in this episode. Go down below in our description to get all our links and details for all our other shows and podcast subscriptions. Please leave a like, a review. That really helps us out. That helps the channel out big time to grow and gain a new audience and find new great fans out there. Because, you know, we've had a lot of people actually recently hit us up. And it's great talking to new people. I have nothing against you old fans. I, you're there in my heart forever. But I always like, I always like hearing from new people and new perspectives. So... Thank you very much for tuning in. Please donate November 3rd to the BC Children's Hospital. We're hitting $1,000, hopefully, with your help. Until then, or until next time, it will not be boring.